Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope that this video finds you doing well. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's just another beautiful, divinely created day that the Lord has given us to give him praise. Amen. He is worthy of all the praise, honor, and the glory. Amen. We just thank God for all the things that he's doing in, in our life and, and the things he's doing in the ministry. Amen. People continue to come to the Lord and give their lives to Christ. We um, baptized some last week and we have some, we have one who came also this past Sunday and we just thank God for what he's doing and, and all of my young people and just let the devil know that he doesn't have all of our young people. Amen. And God is still in the blessing business. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me and we will continue to lift up the name of Jesus so that he will continue to draw men and women to him. Amen. Amen. There is a word <clears throat> from the Lord this afternoon. And we, um, and before we get into our word, I do ask that you continue to pray for our sick and our shut in. And, and we'll mention that at the end of the video as well. But keep prayer going for Israel and the rest of this world and this country. Prayer is much needed. Amen. Before we get into our word, I ask that you join me in a word of prayer. Amen. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, thanking you for looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. Father, without you, there's nothing we can do, but with you, we can do all things. Father, I ask that you bless your word this afternoon. Bless the hearers and the doers of your word. Father, I pray that you allow me to speak what you would have for me to speak at this time and share and to partner to them the word of life that you have given unto me. Bless this ministry that it continue to go out and go forward and, and to win souls for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that you continue, continue to keep us, continue to keep us as we grow in you. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today comes from the, the prophet Zechariah, the minor prophet Zechariah, amen, in that fourth chapter in the sixth verse. Zechariah, fourth chapter in the sixth verse. And it reads as follows. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. And we would like to speak to you from a, a thought today. God works through his spirit. God works through his spirit. We as, as Christians believe that God is a, a triune or trinity of persons, meaning that there are three parts in one, and we'll work that out in a little bit. Each person is omnipotent. Each person is omniscient. Each person is omnipresent and wholly benevolent. They are co-equal and fully divine. He is not three gods, but one God in three persons. He is the Father, He is the Son, and He is the Holy Spirit. Each person is God. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is no separation, nor is one more powerful than the other. Where there is one, the other two are always there. John 1, verses 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And it's referring to God as the word and the word as God and all things were made by him. So when you mention God, you're talking about him. And when you mention the word, you're talking about him. 
<coughs> excuse me. And when you mention the spirit, you are talking about him, because if we look back to the beginning of the book, in, in the book of in the book of Genesis, Moses said in Genesis one verses one through three, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now we can clearly see in Moses account of the creation that all three persons were represented from the start. All three were there as one. All three were there as one. God is there. The word is there who is Christ. The word and the Holy Spirit is there. God speaks. The word comes forth and the spirit creates or distributes. Amen. All three work together, but they are all one. Now, this means that anything that needs to be done or given, it has to initiate from God. Amen. Paul said in, in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, he says, for by him, all things are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether by the, whether they be thrones or dominions or or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him. All things consist. Paul is telling the church that God is all in all. Everything that is here, everything that's been created. God is the one who did it. God was here before and God will be here afterward. Everything is a part of God and God is a part of everything. And when we mention God, we are speaking of God, the father, God, the son and God, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Or the Holy Spirit in in creating or distributing. God exercises his power through the Holy Spirit. Whenever God needs something done or whenever God needs something given, the part or the person of God that does it is his spirit. A Amen. All that is created, all that is done, all that is given come from God through the Holy Spirit. In the creation, God spoke and the word came forth. The spirit brought that which was spoken. It came into existence. Amen. Whenever God used the saints of those of the Old Testament, the Bible would say that the spirit of the Lord came upon them. Amen. And he would energize. He would power, give them power when he came upon them. It was the spirit of the Lord who empowered Elijah. It was the spirit of the Lord who empowered Elisha. It was the spirit of the Lord who empowered Ezekiel. They could not have done the things that they did unless God was with them and God was with them in the form of the Holy Spirit. Any miracles they did, any things they 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 quoted, any any prophecy that they gave, it was all given them by God in the form of the spirit. I hope you're getting this. It was the spirit of the Lord who gave Samson his strength. Samson was not one who had muscles and looking like some kind of hulking creature. No, because if that was the case, they would have known, OK, he has muscles. He's strong. No, no. The Bible says that whenever Samson would perform a feat of strength, it was because the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God would come upon him. Amen. And in Acts 1, Jesus told his disciples before he departed, he said, do not do anything until you are endowed with power. Now, when would they receive the power? Jesus answered that. Jesus says, after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. God works through his spirit. Amen. If there's anything that needs to be created, if there's anything needs to be given, if there's anything of God that needs to be distributed, God works through his spirit. Amen. Watch this. God works through his Holy Spirit in distributing the things that the things that he has to give or to deliver. Paul tells us in first Corinthians 12, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another, the word of faith 
or faith by the same spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Paul also says in Ephesians four that God sent gifts through the Holy Spirit for the perfecting of the saints and the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. He tells he tells Timothy in second Timothy one and seven. Paul tells him that the Holy Spirit gives us power, love and a sound mind or spiritual intelligence. God works through his Holy Spirit. Anything we obtain from God comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our text for today, in our text for today, after Zerubbabel had led the first wave of exiles back from the Babylonian captivity, he was called by God to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. No doubt he regarded it as this as a, as a difficult assignment because he remembered how the other temple that meant that Solomon's temple was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful structures ever created on the earth. And Nebuchadnezzar came and Babylonians destroyed it. And now he was given the assignment to build it back. And the building project itself was huge and, and, and he did not have many workers and as he would like to have. And he faced opposition from the Samaritans and the other people outside of that, because you'll find that in the book of Nehemiah. But the prophet Zechariah gave him a message that he had received from an angel of God. <clears throat> Amen. And the message was a word of encouragement for Zerubbabel. And it was given through the Holy Spirit. Hey, amen. However, the angel's message speaks to anyone with an assignment from the Lord today. First of all, our assignment from the Lord will not be accomplished by human might. That's what it said in the scripture. Not by might. Amen. Not by might. Although our assignment may be huge and we may think that we'll need an army for, of help, it will take more than just that army to get the job done. Although we face opposition from enemies and, and we may think that, that we'll need an army of defenders, it'll take more than an army to fend off the opposition. Don't ever think, don't ever get to the point of thinking that your assignment or your purpose can be accomplished because of the amount of help that you may have. Amen. It takes more than numbers and intellect to achieve what God has assigned or purposed for your life. Amen. And secondly, secondly, it said not by might, not by power. Secondly, our assignment from the Lord will not be accomplished by human power. Although our assignments may seem overwhelming and we may think that we need to summon great strength and energy, it will take more than human means and agency to accomplish the task. It takes more. Amen. Although the power of the opposition may be may be um, imposing and and we may think that we'll need a greater power to overcome. It's going to take more than our little strength or manpower in order for us to get the victory. And <coughs> you have to understand that our assignment from the Lord will be accomplished by the spirit of the Lord. We will not need an army to help. We'll not need an army to defend us. We'll not need great strength and energy because the spirit of the Lord will go to work for us. Boy, I wish I had some help in here. See, he will work through. God will work through whatever means we may have, whatever helps and defenses may be available to us. And he'll use whatever strength and power we have at hand in order to accomplish the assignments of the Lord. God will ask us, what are you holding in your hand, Moses? <laughs> He'll say a staff. God can use a staff. He told Samson, use the jawbone of a donkey, and he killed a thousand Philistines. God will make available whatever's there available to us and work through the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish what he needs to be done. 
Amen. Isaiah 59 and 19 said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, which lets me know when we seem like we're going to be overwhelmed by the enemy, God will allow his spirit to lift up a standard against their, our against our enemy. Amen. Amen. Paul says in Romans 8 and 31, he said, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hey, amen. So today, my brothers and sisters, we need to stop trying to muster up an army and we need to stop trying to ginger up strength because the, the victory does not depend on might and it does not depend on our own power. But the victory depends on the spirit of the Lord. See, that's why the word of the Lord told Jehoshaphat when Jehoshaphat came and he prayed and he said, Lord, the children, the children of Ammon and the children of Moab and Mount Seir, they're coming against us. What can we do? They're, the army is too great for us. And God said, don't be not dismayed, be not dismayed because of this great multitude. Don't worry about how large this army is. We know that they got more people than you have. I know this. He said, you won't even have to fight. He said, a battle is not yours, <laughs> but the Lord. And a lot of us need to understand that if we are a child of God, Satan will have more power than we have. But because we are a child of God, God will allow his spirit to lift up a standard which gives us more power over our enemies. That's why David says, when our enemies, even our foes, came upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumbled and fell. And the reason they stumbled and fell is because the spirit of the Lord lifted up a standard. Amen. And we need to we need to understand and we need to learn to depend on God to use the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that keeps us. He, he also surrounds. He's everywhere. God uses the Holy Spirit. To accomplish his purpose in us, in others, and in the earth. God uses his spirit. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We hope we said something this afternoon that is a, a, a blessing, a, a, a learning experience for you. Amen. We hope that you've gotten something out of the lesson. And we hope that you will share this word that God uses his spirit. God uses his spirit. He works through the Holy Spirit to accomplish whatever he needs to accomplish. Amen. Amen. And we just share with somebody and we just thank God for those who share with family and friends. When we give a word um, of, of encouragement, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, we just thank God for you using this platform to share with other brothers and sisters. Amen. We just thank you for your support that you continue to give us over these past few years. We just thank you for all of that. Amen. If you ever find yourself in the um, Blarney area of Baxley, come on and stop by um, MISPA. We're there every Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 10 o'clock and morning worship begins immediately after between 1115 and 1130. So come on out and and join us. You'll be more than welcome um, we'll, we'll be, we'll be glad to see you. Amen. We'll be glad to see you. If you want to become a, a covenant partner with us, or if you want to sow a seed in this ministry, you're more than welcome to do so. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you feel that you want to sow into it, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, uh, personal check, cashier's check, money order. If you mail it to that, that address right down there at the bottom of the screen, we'll be more than happy um, with whatever you give, you cannot beat God giving. And we thank God for you. This is good ground over here. Amen. Continue to pray for our sick and shut in and those in bereavement, those who are um, in prison, those who are confused and those who are in lack. Continue to pray for them. If you can't pray for them, be a blessing. Amen. Be a blessing. If you can't be a blessing, pray for them. Amen. All of us need prayer in one area, one arena or another. All of us need prayer. So please pray, pray, pray. 
Amen. Also, stay safe out there. COVID is still out there. Folks are still getting sick with COVID, RSV and the flu. And it's coming up, it's getting cooler now and it's coming up to that season. So make sure that you are protecting yourselves and being safe. Amen. 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 Always, uh, as always, I ask you, pray for me. Pray for me. Don't forget me in prayer. Call me out by name. Amen. Uh, we got to go. And um, I love you. And I hope to be seeing you soon. It's the fifth Sunday in this month. So we're looking forward to you to come out and share with us. And after Sunday, I'll be in revival in Register, Georgia at a, at a church called um, New Bethlehem. So it's seven o'clock nightly services. So come on out and share with us. And that's on um, October the 30th, 31st and November 1st. And we'll look forward to seeing you there. Okay. So until then, take care. God bless you. And hope to see you soon.